express what we call the linear regression model. Sounds very fancy, it's not really rocket science. Uh, so here is just an illustration of another set of data points. And the potential line. Here I express a line I was taught. Sorry if, if I missed the classes from elementary school, but sometime in elementary school also, we were taught how to deal with the mathematical concept of a line like this. With uh, Maybe we used A for the intercept and B for the slope or vice versa. I think it has changed from elementary school to high school. And, and now we just call it something else just to confuse you a little bit. We call the intercept beta zero and we call the slope beta one. Because next time we'll meet more of those. There could be more actually, a two and a three and a four. But that's for next time. Um, this is a model that expresses that y is related to the x as a function, as a linear function of x. I would say this is a, a bit of a silly model if you think about it, if I just express it like this, because obviously this is wrong in a way, right? The y's are not, I mean the dots are not on the line. No, none of the dots are exactly on the line. All of the dots are away from the line. So what kind of stupid model is this? To have a line as a model, and then none of the dots are on the model, that's the worst model ever. Uh, hey, I just need to be, this is here the intelligence comes in a little bit, right? That I need to realize that individual persons here, individual observation pairs, individual y values you could also say, it's not necessarily expected, uh, of course we know, it. when we know the height weight phenomenon, right? Of course we know that people of the same height, all 180 centimeter guys will not have exactly the same weight, we know that. That would be pretty stupid to go around and assume the, uh, the other thing. So, we just have to put that, that uh, obvious insight into mathematics and put it into the model. And the way we do it is to say that, hey, the weight, the y, is a random thing that has a, as a part of it, as the expected part of it, has this line. But then on top of that, there is a random variation that makes each individual person deviate potentially a little bit from the line with some variability, right? That's the intelligent formulation of what that, that, that would be an, a relevant, a reasonable model. Not necessarily a true model. I mean, it doesn't have to be a line, of course. But it's a, it's, a, it's a reasonable model to express, I would say. We have different words that goes with it sometimes. We call y the dependent because it depends on x. We call x the explanatory variables. It, x is used here to explain the y. And we call epsilon the deviation, the error, or when we start computing it, this is also linked to this word residual, what is left after the line has done what the line is supposed to do, something is left. That is the deviation, the residual, the error. And then the classical assumption that we use a lot, so corresponding to the assumptions that we made before the fall break on the one and two sample cases. And I'm just going to teach you statistics in the classical way. Of course, in regression statistics in the classical way. Of course, you could do simulation here also, but hey, that's for your next course, right? I mean, we only have so many lectures. And so, so, uh, so for now, it's a kind of classical thing, where the classical assumption is this one. The classical assumption for the linear regression that we do and the statistic we're going to do is to assume that the errors, the deviations, are independent, can be difficult to control. They have the same normal distribution, and that is actually a, an assumption. Here it's put into a picture. That we assume there is a line that expresses the underlying relation between the means of the y and the means of the x, that's the way to say it. And then we assume that there is a normal distribution for each specific height. I assume that the weight distribution is normal, right? So the way people deviate on the weights follow a normal distribution. That's my assumption. And hey, it's a pretty strong assumption. 
because I am assuming the same width of this distribution, the same sigma for people of 160 centimeters plus, and people of two meters. If you collect all the guys at 160 centimeters and all the guys at two, two meters, this model would assume that the variability in weight in these two separate groups should be the same. It's a non-trivial assumption, actually, that you would often be worried about whether that really holds true in real situations. So I'm going to teach you how to check that assumption, because that can often be a wrong assumption. Then we have deep things to... Then we can do other things. That's your next course. That's not in my course. So in this course, we assume and we learn you, teach you to check that things are okay. That was the basic model that we use as a sort of um, theoretical framework for what we do. Now to the computation, step three today. 